Good afternoon. I'm Mike Holley. I'm a master's candidate at the University of Wisconsin in biological systems engineering. All right, so my projects were on solids runoff. One portion is uh, vegetated filter strips and the treatment of solids runoff. So as an introduction, most of you already know, but what is silage? So silage is fermented forage used as animal feed. Corn, is commonly used, corn and alfalfa are commonly used at dairy operations. Two pollutants that are uh, produced from silage, the unsilage pro process and from precipitation, are silage leachate. This is the liquid byproduct from ensiling a forage. It's very high in nutrient concentration and the moisture actually comes within the plant material and is a product of compaction and fermentation. Silage runoff, on the other hand, dairy bunkers are exposed, exposed to the atmosphere and uh, full of surface excess water from precipitation over an area containing silage produces silage runoff. And um, the moisture actually comes from rain itself. So this uh, introduction to filter strips. Filter strip is a long narrow buffer strip, and they're commonly used as best management practices. They're used to treat agricultural wastewater, which is this feedlot runoff and silage runoff. They, uh, they, they're, they're treated by slowing the rate of runoff, and organic matter and pollutants settle, are settled out. They're, and then, as I said, commonly used for feedlot and silage runoff. So the benefits of my treatment study are Prescriptive loading, so I'm looking at design storms and how uh, the filter strips can, are, are able to uh, reduce the pollutant, pollutants. Looking over this over seasonal operation, and then we're also looking at a pretreatment design analysis to uh, facilitate nitrogen removal. So these all can lead to optimized treatment. So these can help protect the watershed and for the producer, they can reduce the storage volume. Maybe they can treat a for first flush and therefore transportations with hauling and spreading. So the pretreatment design, as I just described, is uh, will increase the soil treatment depth. It's going to provide an alternating aerobic and anaerobic soil conditions to provide, to provide different, different uh, environmental conditions for the Micro, microbes to complete a nitrogen cycle. So as for my methods, the experimental design, I had two filter strips, one was control and one using the pretreatment. These filter strips were reduced scale, uh, 12, 12 feet long by four feet wide, and they were applied with runoff from a one to one filter strip area to bunker pad ratio, and were applied with uh, Two design storms, 25 year, 24 hour, and two year, 24 hour. Uh, three re runs of each design storm were accomplished for the filter strips in October, November, and early December. So here's a schematic of my experimental design. Um, the pre treatment design is on your left. As you can see, I have an aerobic, aerobic tank where the runoff would be applied. It would then flow by gravity into an anaerobic section retention tank, and then flow by gravity into a rock check and dispersed over a filter strip. For the control, it would just be dispersed into the filter strip, and effluent is collected at sur sur subsurface. Effluent is, was collected and surface to uh, so I could make a mass balance and see uh, the load reduction. So these, these filter strips were constructed at a dairy in um, south central Wisconsin. As you can see, the sites were excavated, lined with a geomembrane. Um, an engineered soil was installed to provide a, a sufficient infiltration. A rock check at the beginning and end by, by the field towel. And then effluent was, collect, was uh, routed into that uh, big PVC pipe where it was pumped and uh, stored into tanks. So here's before uh, the grass was established, uh, the two filter strips. The tank that you see in the background is where the runoff was collected 
from the dairy bunkers was uh, routed by gravity. So here's the filter strips during a run with the grass establishment. As you can see, the two, tank, the two livestock tanks at the end are collecting the subsurface that's being pumped from below, and then the two surface collection tanks. Another view of, uh, you can see the dispersion apparatus, and um, a sump was used to pump the runoff to the dispersion ap apparatus, and a flow, uh, flow monitoring device was used to apply it at the rates and volumes of the design storms. So here's the results. I know it's a lot of numbers, but um, here's the influent and influent surface and subsurface for the pretreatment design and control for the 25-year, 24-hour design storm. As you can see, the BOD and COD is pretty high for the influent for both uh, applications, and that uh, phosphorus was reduced significantly. BOD and COD were still pretty high in the subsurface and surface not as well reduced for uh, the 25 year. And then the two year 24 hour, again, um, sort of the same thing. Uh, really good PP reduction and some BOD and COD reduction. So as the influent to both pretreatment and control filter ships were low pH, around four, and were high in organic matter. Um, the strength of runner was greater in, in the influent applied to the two year 24 hour storm, which, which would uh, simulate a real storm event. And then the effluent, subsurface effluent from both filter ships had a almost neutral pH. The pH was uh, raised and had lower organic concentrations than the influent. So as you can see, here's some uh, percent reductions with the different nutrients for uh, the, pre the pretreatment pre filter strip and the control. Pretreatment is in blue and red. You don't see too much difference between the two, except for the pretreatment having a little bit higher BOD5 reduction. So. Again, TP and uh, soluble reactive phosphorus had the highest subsurface concentration reduction. Ammonia was the next highest for both filter strips. And then pretreatment had a, a higher concentration reduction. So here's the results for loading. As you can see, uh, this is percent loading reduction for the pretreatment and uh, the control again. And similar loading reductions for the filter strip, as you can see, the pretreatment added nitrate to subsurface, and um, that's why it has a negative percent loading. So nitrate accumulated within the effluent. Okay, so 8% and higher loading reduction for soluble reactive phosphorus and, and total phosphorus. Again, in, increase in nitrate concentrations for the pretreatment and 60% higher load reduction for all nutrients except nitrate. So here's the concentration reductions for the two year 24 hour. Uh, the pretreatment had a little bit better uh, concentration reduction, as you can see, but still similar to the 25 year. Again, TP and SRP had, were greatly reduced. Uh, Pretreatment control had similar ammonia reduction this time around 26%, so a little bit lower for the two-year 24-hour. And the pretreatment again had a higher BOD5 reduction for the two-year 24-hour. So the loading reduction, the pretreatment had a little bit lower loading reduction because it had more surface runoff for this uh, design storm, and therefore um, not as many nutrients were uh, successfully uh, trapped by the filter strip. And um, this could have been done due to, to the storms, uh, the design storms being applied. Uh, the, the soil moisture in the pretreatment filter strip was a little bit higher. So therefore, it couldn't infiltrate as much runoff. Again, as I said, pretreatment had lower infiltration. The load reduction for both storms applied with the design storms uh, were less for the 25 year, 24 hour. 
due to lower temperatures and perhaps uh, higher uh, soil moisture concentrations in both filter strips. So in conclusion, 80% um, higher reduction in con concentration for phosphorus, both soluble reactive phosphorus and total phosphorus. 35 to 65% reduction in concentration of total solids, BOD, and COD for both filter strips. And 60% and greater low reduction for the 25-year, 24-hour design storm. The, the, the pretreatment design, the, the new design had higher BOD5 reduction and an increase of nitrate within the effluent. And then, again, application in colder temp temperatures could increase the soil moisture and result in lower infiltration. So future work, um, we're going to do more design storm loading to both filter strips design in the spring and summer. Uh, it, we're going to look at expanding hydraulic detention times for aerobic and anaerobic sections within the pretreatment design. Looking at incorporating a polishing step for increased denitrification in pretreatment filter strip design to try and facilitate a denitrification of that nitrate. And then modeling soil moisture and load reduction for filter strip applications. Looking at soil moisture and how that affects load reduction. And with that, I would like to acknowledge my advisor, um, Dr. Rebecca Larson, uh, my lab and field tech, and my committee members, John Panuskin and Dr. Karthikian. Yeah, so the question was uh, clarifying that uh, the 25 year had lower reductions. And again, this is because I applied the runoff in, in, in the fall and early winter. So um, the lower temperatures could have increased the soil moisture and then uh, less uh, runoff was able to infiltrate. So that's why there is greater load reductions and uh, uh, less, less uh, reductions in concentration, really. Thinking about the last presentation, the phosphorus source absorption capacity, do you have an idea what the length of, of lifespan of this practice would be in that, that engineered material in the filter strip for, for phosphorus source? Well, it's engineered soil. It's not really engineered material, so it's just uh, sand and soil. But um, that's something that's a big question with filter strips, and I agree, is what's the lifespan on a filter strip due to clogging and the accumulation of phosphorus. And uh, my study, unfortunately, hasn't ran long enough for me to know. So, but maybe my runs in the summer, I can maybe see if there is a less uh, reduction, if, if these are actually accumulating more phosphorus. But it's definitely got to do a little bit more runs to actually find out that out. OK, the, the question is the cost. Um, I guess that's uh, dependent on the site. Uh, how it's designed, um, I, I really don't know. I, I wish I could give you a number for the size of filter strip, but um, it's variable on um, how much you're going to collect. If you're collecting the first flush, um, and then how, how, how what you're scaling the filter strip to, like this scale was to a one, one, one to one. So one acre of bunker would be one acre of filter strip. So it's, it's just... Um, we're looking at that in incorporation, so.